Hello and welcome to Engine Adventures Review of this 2021 JLUR, that's a Jeep Wrangler Unlimited Rubicon 4xE. So this one, you can see all of the blue accents throughout it, 4xE there on the hood. Plug in right there to charge it. Blue accents on the trail rated, blue accents on everywhere blue tow hooks which is kind of cool and we always see the red tow hooks but it's cool to see blue tow hooks or recovery points or whatever you want to call them uh yeah this one's pretty much your standard jlur this one has the soft top manually folding folding and of course you get bfg all terrains i believe those are 33 inches tall pretty close to it if not and it rides a little smoother, it seems like, than the Eco Diesel did. Wanders a tiny bit on the freeway. Not too bad, though. Nothing like, you know, old 90s trucks or whatever. Or older Wranglers, for that matter. The hybrid system is pretty awesome. Good power out of it. Let's go ahead and pop the hood. go so it's a two liter turbo see the turbo there on that side inline four cylinder and then has the hybrid electric motor that sits i believe just behind the engine if i'm wrong i'll put that up on the screen so the electric motor actually is before the transmission which is kind of cool so when you're running in just electric mode and we'll double check all that, but when you're running in only electric mode, it runs through the eight speed automatic. So you get the additional gearing of the transmission and transfer case. So you can do some low range off-road stuff, which this one has been taken and used and maybe abused a little bit. And I haven't even started my testing yet for off-roading. So it wasn't me that did all this uh, little minor damage here and there but it's a Rubicon, it's built to handle that kind of stuff. Let's go ahead and take a look inside. All right, here inside, let's go ahead and start it up. You can see additional blue accents throughout. And like I said, this is just the manually folding soft top. Simply pull those down and then you can push it up. It's a little bit wet out, so I'm not gonna do that. Go. anyway I do like the rugged looks of it seems like there's a big rubber bezel around the screen your controls here in the middle just like all the other Rubicons this one does have a four auto which I don't remember seeing before in the eco diesel Rubicon that I had but it may have had that front and rear locking differentials which only can be activated in four-wheel drive low you can't even engage the rear in four high which yeah, that should be an option. This one does have the four auxiliary buttons there. And of course, the sway bar disconnect. Up here is the charge indicator. So when you plug it in, you have five lights here that show you how charged it is. Up to, you know, 20, 40, 60, 80, 100% charge. And you can see that from outside the vehicle as well. The cabin's the same. I I don't know what to say about this that hasn't already been said. I mean, it's a just a Jeep Wrangler Rubicon inside. You've got the same cabin, just a few different accents. You've still got your little hidden Jeeps and other Easter eggs throughout. And the one difference here on the side, you have the hybrid mode, electric mode, or e-save mode. And the e-save's kind of cool because it'll use regenerative braking and actually increase your battery um, as you use the use the regenerative braking um, and kind of holds it at 95% uh, right now I'm about 80% 79% so we'll be able to do some all electric off-road testing as well of course we have the off-road pages and all that stuff here we can go to the hybrid pages and see what's going on between the battery 
there's the hybrid motor right there behind the engine in front of the transmission there's your transfer case anyway you can see all that you can set oops go back i missed it so you can set the charging schedule of when to charge you know what time of day and whatever so that you can maximize that efficiency when you're charging it at home or whatever and paying for it you have the option there of charging it at a time when it costs you less money there's still all the normal stuff seat heaters here steering wheel heater and you have the off-road pages which we'll end up using this today so might as well leave that on there two cup holders there additional storage and there's a usb down inside of there here are the tools to remove the doors and the windshield fold the windshield down if you want it is a jeep so if you need to store cash for whatever you can hide some cash under there i was gonna say something you know store it for when it breaks down because these 4xe's have had a few teething problems but they seem to be getting there now um anyway you have the cash there so you can call a tow truck but i think jeep has sorted all that out now and you should be able to have good reliability for the new 4xe's coming off the line or 4 by e sorry should be saying 4 by e again blue accents on the seats and all that kind of stuff rear seat just the same as all the others does have fold down armrest with cup holders power windows 115 volt outlet and vents here of course more little easter eggs and jeep things back there let's go ahead and take a look in the storage area or the cargo area and i didn't mention you've got the mesh pockets there on the back of these seats you've got the mesh and the molly system I don't know if it's an actual Molly system, but similar to that. Under here, you have that battery, and I'll have to put the size of that up on the screen. Kind of cool, you still get the Jeep, but then you get a battery there in the back. So, uh, different design, different Easter egg than the regular Rubicon, but this battery goes all the way across. It's a decent size, but uh, it shows for me I can get 21 to 28 miles of range out of it um, in pure electric mode, which is enough, almost enough for me to get to work and back. But on the freeway, the electric isn't as efficient, so you're using more power there. Does have all your normal dimensions, and just like the other Rubicons have on there. Under here, you have your storage for your bolts for your roof, windshield, door hinges. You can pop that off and your jacks underneath there does come with the 110 volt charging at least this one did and the storage case for the different panels there over here 12 volt emergency access to the fuel door if you need that and you can see all three seats have tether points for car seats uh it's a little tight you can't quite fit okay depending on your car seats you may or may not be able to fit three wide across the back here so it is a Rubicon again, so you do get rock rails protecting your door seals and stuff there. And I've never had a vehicle spray as much water as this one. Uh, most of the time it's dry out here, but I've had a few times, I believe I had a Frontier when it was real wet. And I was just spraying up from here, it goes right over onto the windshield, and it was actually leaking a little bit. So I'm going to see if we can tighten the roof down right here. I think it was coming in right there. So you can see the water drips here and on the door there. And I, I think that was probably just not closed properly. So we'll see that again in the off-road section. This thing has great power. I'll put up all the, the stats. I believe it's 375 horsepower, 470 foot-pounds of torque. Uh, it's got about 10,000 miles on it and hard miles because these are journalist miles. The tires are worn down, a little bit of chunking. You can see a few spots there, but really overall, they're not in terrible shape, but in the rain, it's real easy just to spin the, the rear tires. You probably saw on the inside, I had it in four wheel drive auto, and that was because it was just so easy to spin these 
tires and like i said they're worn down that's kind of to be expected but also with the power this thing has it makes it uh, real easy to to spin the tires and if you're used to wranglers of the past maybe you've only driven the six cylinder versions whether it's the four liter inline six or the 3.6 liter v6 these new ones the two liter turbo by itself is pretty good of course the two liter turbo with the electric motor behind it's really good love the torque on this thing i haven't driven a 392 yet but i really did enjoy the eco diesel as well so power has come up on these so much and it really does make a big difference and that was one of my biggest gripes with jeeps uh, in the past i mean they're made for low speed crawling but if you're using it as a daily driver it's nice to have the power and jeep is delivering all right base price 51,695 this one has a few options the red firecracker clear coat exterior paints for 245 the leather seats 1695 Cold weather group with the heated and uh, heated front seats, remote start, all that stuff, 995. Trailer tow features, heavy duty electrical group, auxiliary switches, all that kind of stuff. Bigger battery, 795. The safety group, 995 with park sense with the rear sensors and the advanced safety group with the automatic high beam, the forward collision, adaptive cruise control, all that kind of stuff, 795. And the steel bumper group, 1745. I didn't talk about that, but those are really nice to have. I like the steel bumper group, and it's easy to add a winch on if you're looking to do that. The all-weather floor mats, those are really nice as well. All of these features are ones that I could see myself getting. I would maybe forgo the advanced safety group, but that's just me. I think the money is worth it. For $7.95, it's worth getting that, but personally, I just don't need it. With destination, total $61,000. 265 49 mpge is their estimate or 20 miles per gallon on gas only i honestly haven't been keeping close track of that i've been charging it so a lot of the time i was electric only other times i was gas only and yeah i mean i like i said i didn't keep quite keep a close eye on that but if you're able to drive less than 20 miles a day you can just do full electric if you're driving less on the freeway you know lower speeds you can probably get close to 30 miles a day no problem really the only qualm with the 4xe rubicon is the on-road driving characteristics so it does so well everywhere else and even around town it does just fine it's just when you're on the open road it's just a little bit more work than the other vehicles out there but it's also a lot more capable off-road. Trying to think of anything that would really compare, maybe a ZR2, which drives much better on-road, but yeah, it's got front and rear lockers, but it's not nearly as capable off-road. Okay, I shouldn't say not nearly, but it's not as capable as the Rubicon off-road. Okay, we're in four-wheel drive auto because it's a little wet out. And we're going to pull out and see if we can do 0 to 60. Both those cars are in the other lane. No brake torquing or anything. We're in hybrid mode. Okay. Right here. Hybrid mode. Four-wheel drive auto. Three, two, one. Sorry, I was rolling. Three, two, one, go. Took a second for the gas engine to kick on. 60. So that thing is pretty darn fast, but you can already hear the ridiculous road noise in it. Uh, back into two-wheel drive, back in, since it's in hybrid mode, it's already just gone full electric on me. Yeah, uh, this thing, just excellent power for a Wrangler especially. So I love it. I want to drive the 392 so I can get a feel for how that thing drives, but and the torque, the get up and go horsepower on this thing, all of it's just great, really moves. Really, really enjoy driving it as far as that goes. Like I said, I don't like the noise from the roof. I don't like the slight wander. I just turned the fan on and a bunch of water just fell, <laughs> fell out of the fan. Hopefully everything works after this. Uh, anyway. 
a couple little things that I don't like, but for the off-road capability, it's totally worth it. 100% worth it. So. Thank you for watching Engine Adventures review of this 2021 JLUR 4xE. It's a great vehicle overall. I enjoyed it for the most part. On road, it it's got plenty of power. You can get up and go. The regenerative braking, you can adjust how aggressive it is and almost have one foot of driving where you let off and it starts regenerating a decent amount of power and slows you down, you know, a, a significant amount. It takes a little bit to get used to. If you're used to just letting off the throttle and coasting, maybe you don't want to use that feature or use it and get used to it. And so when you let off the throttle, you're actually charging the battery. Anyway, not bad. The only qualms I had with it were that soft top is noisy on the road. You hear everything outside and the steering or whatever it is, it wanders just a little bit on the road, but really not bad. Like I said, for what you get, the off-road capabilities of it, those are sacrifices I'm willing to make. And the hard top definitely is a little bit better uh, uh, as far as the quiet ride goes. But they're still a little noisy, but not as noisy as this. If you liked what you saw, be sure to hit thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button. Ring the bell so you get notifications when we post new videos. And be sure to comment down below with any questions or comments you may have. If you didn't like it and you give me a thumbs down, be sure to comment and let me know why. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.